Hello and welcome to GPTV on Tuesday the 15th of August. My name is Philip Kingston. And I'm Gary Peer. Gary, uh, we're heading now very much towards the end of the year because I don't know whether you know this, I don't know whether you thought about it, but here we are on the 15th of August. Let's say a client rings you tomorrow. What are you looking at? You've got something, on your, you've got something sort of hanging off your face on the other side. Yeah, oh no, it's just like a little pimply okay. bit. That's okay, don't worry about it. Um, if somebody rang, yeah. thank you for interrupting that beautiful right. flow of an introduction. Yeah, uh, if somebody rang us today or came into the, can you stop <laughs> no, <laughs> something's there. Uh, and said, look, I want to sell my house. Yep. And they had to go through the usual get yeah. it ready, clean yep. up, two to three yeah. week period. Yep. Uh, that means that they're going to be first open for inspection, first week of September, yep. auction last week of September, now. October, November, December, four months, end of the year almost done and dusted. So viewers, if you are thinking about a spring pre-summer sale, believe it or not, you need to be ringing now. You've got to move it, Bill. That's you what it's about. You've you got, you got to speaking, move it, move it. Yeah. Speaking of moving, yeah, the Carlton industry... moved pretty well, the, didn't uh, they? Against geez. the Demons on Saturday night. I went to that game, I've got to tell you. Uh, you know, I think Carlton supporters, when they're up and about, they're, they're not liked. I've worked it out. Well, they're not they're, liked they're because they're because smug. Smug. Is this There's, a smug look? Yeah. <laughs> That's the sort of smug you Carlton know, winning The look. Carlton army, when it's marching, yeah. are horrible, yeah, they're, they're horrible, horrible yeah, people. Yeah. But as my wife did say to me a couple mm, of days yes. ago, you can't go saying that on GPTV, Philip, she yeah. says, yeah. Uh, in, and in, in her inimitable yeah. way of constantly giving yes. me advice. Yeah. That is generally, unfortunately, correct. Yeah. She Maybe says, unwelcomed, yeah. but still correct. She yeah. says, every time <laughs> I slam Carlton, I'm slamming a great proportion of oh, our right. clientele. Yeah. And so, our people in our office too. There's a strong the leadership Carlton following, you know, between myself and Jeremy Roses, Daniel Fisher and Ben Rothschild. There's a lot of love there out is. there for there the is. Blue Boys who are, uh, look, at unstoppable, it seems. It almost feels like unstoppable. Anyway, anyway let's, let's, move let's on talk real yeah. estate yep. because speaking of winning, yep. uh, we had 20 auctions on the weekend, Gary. Yep, we sold did. 15 out of 20 for a 75% yep. clearance. Nice, healthy, balanced market. Industry was at 69%. Now put up the towers. Can we so put up the towers? Don't just breeze over. We've yet, got a little bit of boast time Yet there. again, we continue to smash the industry yes. to pieces. Some boast and, music. And yet again, our fabulous team. And yes, it's our processors that do ensure that if you sell with Gary Peer and Associates, you do have a higher chance of selling and selling yep. well. Yeah, we had some whoppers too, didn't Speaking we? Speaking yeah. of selling well, Gary, well, we, we did have some few, amazing that, results. That went, went very, very strongly, Phil. Um, you know, I played golf and I played with Darren uh, on Friday afternoon yes. because, you know, that's our weekend, as you know. Yep, we have a little, yep. bit of, little few hours. A few moments hours. in between phone yeah, calls. Yeah, phone calls or whatever. So I know a, that you I switch your phone off when you're on the no, golf course. I don't switch it off, I divert. So you divert. Just so for those few those hours. those that need Gary on a Friday, they can still find if you him. ring his mobile number, it'll divert to his yeah, EA, who does a wonderful job. She but does. more importantly, yeah. if you want Gary, ring him on WhatsApp. Because yeah, you, you don't that. divert WhatsApp, do you? No, I thanks no. for that, Phil. I'm glad that you uh, had that little bit of serenity ruined for me. But anyway, uh, but we both were sore. And on the weekend, we were both walking around like that. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? Does that mean that we are crooked estate agents now? Because we couldn't stand up straight. So I thought, crooked estate agents. I've never been one of those before. There Very cute to be one. But Gary, that's what um, it must feel like. In your, in your, in your, uh, in your attempt witty, yeah. to make something comedic, <laughs> yeah. you've turned it into... Something tragic, you think? Something tragic yeah. and pathetic. Fair enough. Uh, Thanks but, for your encouragement. But, but yeah. Comedy I think, festivals I, I on think in March. probably yeah. the reason that you were both feeling a little bit sore is yes. that, you know, 18 holes is a lot at your age, isn't it? Well, it can be, yeah. I suppose so. I Gary, suppose my level of fitness, it can be. Phil, can we talk about yeah, some of the outstanding results that yeah. We had across yeah, the let, weekend let, because that, there were some outstanding results. Yeah, we're Phil, and uh, I've got to say that Jeremy Rose has kicked off in uh, Hewenden Road, 9 at 6 Hewenden Road, the range there is 7 to 7 70. Uh, Phil, great apartments at track competition, three bidders going for it there, uh, paying uh, ultimately over the range and well over the reserve. So I think a message, well quick there. message yeah. to those people that are thinking about buying, yeah. and particularly investors, and by the way, uh, I think real estate will always be a great investment, no, of regardless of land tax and regardless of, you yeah, know, imposts uh, and, uh, uh, and regardless compliance. of attempts and by governments to regulate markets, yes. which, you know, the free market, let the free market flow. Rip, rip let it flow. Rip, rip, let rip, the free rip, market rip, flow. Uh, because it's very efficient. Um, but if you buy an apartment in a great street like yep. Hewenden, which is serviced by Tram and Dan Nong Road and, yep. and the Alma Village Shopping Centre, what do tenants want? They want to be able to yes. walk to great facilities. They're not called tenants anymore, by the way. That's no, an offensive that's and outlawed good, name. Good, good, yeah, good, what no, are no, they called now, Gary? They are called uh, rental 
not rental providers. Renters. 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 They're called yeah, renters. renters. So yeah. we've got a tenant well, is now a renter. Do you think it makes it better? And a, and a landlord is a rental provider. Um, I must say... Yeah, does it make a, it better? The titles well, matter? I don't know. Well, titles probably do matter. Probably. Mm. Although in this politically correct world, Gary, I know where Who you're going. Cares, but you know, really. if you think about it, a landlord, yes. it's... It's That's a not, dated issue. It, it, it is, well, it's not you know a what, great you name. see, you think of somebody dressed in ga- landlord garb in the in the UK <laughs> as a as a kind of prop overseeing the you don't see it as someone who's sweated and who's got a one property and, no. and who's trying to pay it off and who's trying to grapple with getting some return and taking some risk and, and, and maybe some sacrifice. That's not what a land a landlord, Philip, is somebody that oversees. Those that they feel well, it is are a very, the subjects it, it, of their property. It, it is a feudal yeah. term. It is Gary. a feudal term. It's not yeah. only a feudal yes. term, but it is it is a very a class dated, orientated. Yeah. Oh, and we're an egalitarian so. society, so we have rental providers yes. and, and we have users, renters. renters. No, just yeah, renters. renters. Yeah, fair enough. I don't um, know. I think tenants were all right. I'm property owners and tenants. I don't know what's wrong with that. Too, yep. any, yep. Anyway, uh, anyway, the where, world's complicated. Where was I going on this? I was saying I can't that remember. well, You're rambling. Well located apartments. Yep. Walking distance to shops and public transport yep. will always be a good investment. And well-located apartments are what are selling uh, in Elwood, Philip, and always sell well. And one at Four Garden Court. Uh, this is one of four, Phil, and Jeremy Rosen's again uh, had the auction on it. The Bull Herskovitz handled that. Uh, Phil, four bidders going strongly for this uh, price between 1 and 1.1 and ended up selling, Phil, and unique properties can get a premium, we know that, for $1,275,000. One of only two, Gary. So Elwood, hot suburb, one of only two great sort of real estate and also an older style looking building, which we know is always in demand. Do you know where Millawa is, Philip, the actual area of Billawa? Millawa Millawa is is Victoria somewhere. It is. I think it's part of the wheat belt of Victoria. You know, it's not far from... where was our friend in jail? What was the name of that bloke? What was the name of that Beach bloke? Beachworth. Beachworth. That's it, yeah. Beachworth. Not far from Beachworth, yeah, where our friend was in jail. Um, I'm not sure that's something we should be advertising in GPTV, but near Beachworth, Just, just on this yeah. issue. No, no, don't, no, just no, leave no, it. I just want don't to pick say, it up. No, no, well, well, just leave I it. Mean, you, you put it out there. Yeah, well, uh, I this, didn't put up there for you to keep building on it. episode of GPTV, yeah. I just want to say that yeah. We're friends with everybody. Yes. Because ultimately, everyone's got a story. Yep. Everybody... Uh, sometimes good people make mad, bad decisions. Correct, right? correct. This wasn't, uh, this correct. wasn't in jail for anything other than a bad decision. Uh, but anyway, let's just keep moving on. We don't need to go and retry the whole thing, Philip, because God knows it was, you know, a traumatic period of everybody's life. Anyway, how do we get off the track? I don't know. And, and, and yeah. you know, with just just to put just to wrap this up... And we're going to continue with it, yeah. Your mother came out, she was on parole, and she, and was she lived a long and happy life. And she life did nothing else that. wrong after that. Anyway, uh, for 57 Millowa Avenue, uh, Malvern East, Millowa is where Brown Brothers East, near Beechworth. Ah, yes, uh, absolutely. But, Rutherglen, uh, Rutherglen uh, In area. that area, that yeah. winery area, Phil, which is a lovely part of uh, Victoria, but 57 Millowa Avenue, also lovely part of Victoria, Malvern East, and uh, I remember, you know, uh, see, I came to the auction, saw you there. Uh, the wonderful Chawton Lane one during that auction, uh, which is a, sh- a, 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 a horse that I've got a toenail of, Phil. Just right. a little toenail right. of. Okay. Um, and we had a look at the park, Phil, because it's lovely in Melbourne East and they've got that beautiful park at the back of this property. Anyway, uh, someone from Sydney came down and bought as an investment, Phil. Yes. Which I think is a very interesting thing to be uh, aware of. And for our viewers, Sydney people are starting to say, you know what? Sydney is just too expensive. There's value in Victoria. We're going to cross the border and come on down. And that's what this buyer uh, did. And interestingly, viewers, uh, land tax is becoming a massive issue yeah. in this state. And there, uh, and there so, too. So, yeah, yeah, it is. But obviously, if you buy a property in another state, it's they, not don't, aggregated, they, they don't sure. aggregate the that's land right. tax. That's right. I haven't found uh, so a way to do So there are some that. advantages in buying in other states. There is, um, yeah. But very astute purchases. And this guy was a very nice man uh, and, and had a great sense of humour. Uh, but interestingly... Do you think so? Inter- yeah, I do. I think he just wanted to give you a hard time. Well, he did. Badger you he and did. You. And I took oh. it in. Yeah. The, in the manner that I thought it was No, I don't think it was. Extended. I think he just wanted to tell you you were misery. I think because he was saying to us, Phil, you know, the champagne that you give out the auction is not good enough. These cookies aren't good enough. Um, what you're wearing is good, but it could be better. I mean, he was a very yeah, harsh critic, was a, was strong, he? He, he was, was a str- He was a strong critic. Tough guy. Uh, but yeah. let me just again say that, um, you know, an astute buyer, because yeah. he came down from Sydney, and if you think about what is $2 million buy you in Sydney, not, not a great an deal. So room. I think he was yeah. somewhat surprised that he could get all of this land, almost yep. 700 square metres of land, with a park at the back, 
a really good livable, letable home yep. for just circa $2 million. Well, one nine fifty was the so price, Phil. I want to have a quick yeah. shout out to the vendors oh, of that yes, property because so they I. did mention that they watch GPTV. They do. And I just want to say, Delightful. what a beautiful family. They are a lovely family, Really Phil. just... Just, you know, we had the great pleasure of dealing. Yes. There were three generations. Yep, they were. Uh, there right. was the, the father that w was, was there, actually yes. the owner so, of the house. There, there were his children. Yep. And then there were children of the children. Yep. So there were three generations. Yep. And I must say thank you to those yes. vendors. Because they watch. people like you make our job yes. really so much more than just a living. Absolutely. And uh, they're very well said, Phil, and uh, lovely, lovely, love, lovely the way that you put that forward. And yes, thanks again mm. to the vendors who we have done business with before. And uh, congratulations, because, Phil, that's been uh, in the home for many generations. Duplicating everything it's been for I've decades at home. we just move on yeah. to, the next, to the next sale, Gary? What I else? We'll finish that one now, Miller. What, what, else? what okay. else did we sell? We sold Philip 15 Ellington Street. Now, that was sold for $3,100,000. Uh, and again, an auction with multiple bidders and competing. And a shout out to the owner of that house, who was yep. the most delightful woman who had just entrusted us with that sale and let us do what we yes. do. Uh, we had a big crowd of people there. It was on the market, sold under the hammer, yep. sold competitively. And absolute shout out to the buyers who uh, we sold a house for. So the father bid on behalf of the kids. I don't know whether he was paying for it or not, but he he uh, bid for the kids. And at the end of it, we talked about the sale that they'd given us 20 odd years ago really? on Hopkins Street in McKinnon. Wow. Um, and I remembered the house, I remembered them, and I remembered Is that the how seller I, or the buyer? The buyer. Oh, right. And how I remembered how when they gave us that house, uh, it was just probably one of the biggest sales of our career. And again, thank you. You know who I'm talking about if you're watching GPTV. Again, thank you. Phil Ursel Let's call this issue. Uh, this episode, Warm, Gary. Fuzzy, no, no, no. The right. grateful edition. The grateful. Yeah. Gratitude. Gra the gratitude the, uh, yeah, edition. The gra uh, issue, yeah, the gratitude uh, episode, Philip. Uh, 30 Ursuldun Street. Well, interestingly, Philip. Ursul is it Ursuldun or Ursuldun? Oh, I like to put it as an Ursuldun, uh, <laughs> Phil. And Ursuldun sold. The Scottish um, people have given us yeah, so much oh, rich no, language. Oh, they've given us wonderful language. It's a bratlich mullich mecht mecht That's what they say over there in Scotland, Philip. Uh, but 30 Ursel Doon Street sold Philip uh, under the hammer for a, a, a very, very big amount over expectation. And in fact, the buyer who bought it said, you know, I thought your range was probably about right. But it just had that feeling. Some houses, Phil, they've just got it. You yes, know? And yes. that was a house that, you know, it, it, it just ticked a lot of boxes. It was unprecedented. And so was the amount of people at the auction. Well, well Gary, a lot I, of people I came there. along because I'd finished yep. an auction. And you I did. thought, I've got a bit of spare time. I'll come and critique you. And I do yep. have some, some, some constructive criticism that of you can the keep way yourself, you... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome to keep that, that, yeah, keep that, that auction. Yeah. Uh, but massive crowd. I, I, I've got to tell you, you wouldn't have seen a bigger crowd no. in the middle of a hot real estate boom. That's for sure. So uh, well done. Buyers to are the, back. And buyers well done to back. those buyers because they also are delightful people. And well done to the sellers who've had that home for many decades as well, Philip. It's been also and a inter Interestingly, yeah. Gary, the people that bought this house, yes. we know them well. We do. And we know they're going to really add some value oh, to yeah. this property. They're and good. I cannot wait to see what they do because yeah. they do know how to add value to yep, houses. They're going to make it even better, Phil. But uh, anyway, amazingly popular home. And interesting, Phil, we had buyers from so many areas. A number of buyers from Camberwell and someone from Turak was interested and someone else from Carnegie and Bentley. and You know, just a whole mix of people interested coming together for that wonderful property and uh, well, really fighting hard. Well, I think it's the Scottish hard. name, Gary, that uh, people come out for. Erseldoon will always drag people in for the Battle um, of Erseldoon. How, how are you feeling about the market? I'm feeling very good. I'd like to continue with my uh, little spiel here, Philip. Seven Maxwell Grove was sold for an undisclosed yeah, amount. Shout out but, to Jan Dosen uh, who handled that property on, yeah. on behalf of some delightful clients of hers. Circa two uh, and a half million, Philip, which was where we, we thought had a competitive maybe, auction, yeah. three people bidding for that. So yeah. uh, one of the things that we said in our sales meeting yesterday, Gary, was that there were multiple bidders yes. on just about all of our auctions. Yeah, there was a lot of them. So, yeah. uh, and a 75% clearance rate, that is the sign of a very healthy market, yes. given the fact that we've been running in the 70s and 80s now yep. for the last kind of five to six weeks. Absolutely, Philip. We get to Wilgar Street and uh, that was uh, another popular property. Philip sold for 1710 Just edged over the range there. Uh, well done to Lamour Herskovitz who had four bidders competing for that one uh, with Jeremy Rosen's auctioning. So a busy weekend, Phil. Uh, volume still not huge, but a little bit more volume coming through. 
And uh, of course, uh, this weekend, not a big volume weekend either. How am I feeling about the market, the, you asked? Yes. Can I answer? Yes, you? you can answer. Thank you. I'm feeling very good about the market. I think that good properties are selling well. I think prices are holding, not necessarily grow, growing or going up, but I think there is a feeling that that's what might happen, Phil, because there is a lot of people now who have come out and said, you know what, we know interest rates are where they are. We feel they're going to stay around here now. Um, we want to make a move. We've waited. We've watched. We've had enough. And uh, we're getting itchy on the trigger now. We want to pull the trigger and buy something. That's my Okay, feeling. itchy trigger, itchy trigger, finger, itchy trigger, trigger, trigger finger. finger buyers. Itchy trigger finger buyers one, are doing something. One stuff. thing I will say is that if you look at the industry rate of 69%, Gary, yep. balanced market, we call a balanced market circa 70 plus. Who's we? Uh, a, a boom market is when, when the industry starts to clear high 70s plus, yeah. and 80 plus. Well, we're so getting a lot I, of that too. I think a 70% give or take mm. is the sign of a healthy market. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that, Phil. Uh, looks, we've got a few homes to review. We've got also a few homes to uh, uh, that are coming up for auction this weekend, Phil. We're sort of all over the place again in terms of suburbs. And we cover a lot of areas, don't we? We, cover we do, Gary. Uh, we do. Phil, Dover Street in Bentley East, number 8 Dover Street, is my first auction uh, this weekend. And I'm looking forward to doing the Bentley East thing, Phil. I love it there. Well, you would, Gary. Almost yep. 600 square metres of prime land, a three-bedroom, one-bathroom, very livable home. Yep. Uh, so there is a land opportunity, but you can move into that house and maybe add some value, maybe extend, go up, go out, yep. or obviously... Do what so many people are doing in, in Bentley, Gary. That is, they're taking land and transforming it. Yes, and that's in the low ones, Phil. Nothing to sneeze at, although someone did sneeze and it might have been picked up on camera. But let's move on, Phil, because you are also starting off uh, in Warrigal Road, also a little bit further out. Uh, to home base, Phil, but we're selling everywhere. So tell us about this well, property that you're meeting, Maureen Maserati. Surrey Hills, Gary, is one of Melbourne's finest suburbs. And beautiful. Maureen has auction honours, and I will be assisting her, of you course. Will. Yep. Uh, this is a two-bedroom, one-bathroom, single-storey villa home with a wraparound courtyard garden and a lock-up garage. Great first home buyer's market because of the affordability of the price, but also great for right sizes, empty nesters, just a gr or an investment opportunity because you know you're buying a parcel of land with your own single story home. You are, Phil. I might wander off after my uh, Bentley East auction, pop down to Carnegie and check out. Uh, Leo Samuel and Jack Slater in Neerham Road. That's one at 207 Neerham Road. Together with Dizzy Wang. Uh, yes. This is three bedrooms, two bathrooms, plenty of off-street car parking, wraparound courtyard gardens. This is uh, just affordable real estate in a great location. Uh, you will be working your way back, Phil, from Surrey Hills to St Kilda. Uh, just a little bit behind the alphabetically, but very, uh, you know, not as close by as they are in the alphabet, but Argyle Street, St Kilda, is a great looking property. Gary, I love Argyle Street. For those viewers that don't know where Argyle Street is, yep. it runs between Chapel Street and Brighton Road. It does. So you've got two trams on your doorstep. Yep. You've got Carlisle Street, you've got Chapel Street, Windsor, uh, you've got train stations. And what a gorgeous home. I mean, that's about as good as it gets, Gary. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, off-street car parking. And yes, it has what most houses don't have in St Kilda, and that's a pool and spa. So mm -hmm. that's a life a life style purchase. Got to say, I love that, Phil. And I love Union Street, Windsor. It's a great spot as well. Phil, Leo Samuel has his second auction for the day. A little bit later on, 3.30 p.m. Tell us about great it. Great property, Gary. Two bedrooms, one bathroom, one car space. Uh, and that is a really good size home. And of course, Union Street in Windsor. Where would you rather live? What a great location. Absolutely. As I've said before, Phil, have gavel, will travel. And the auctioneer, Simon Rodolnik, is going to be at 3.30 in Hadley Street, Seaford, Phil. We love it in Seaford. Gary, uh, Seaford is, is just an outstanding location that yep. I've not often been to. No. But when I do go down... Uh, towards the peninsula, yeah, yeah, I travel, I, I travel along there and yeah. I think, wow, what a great place to live. It is. Two bedrooms, one bathroom um, and a undercover car space, Gary. We've got courtyard garden and, you know, to think four to 450 buys you a house down there. How good is that? Oh, I, I don't really think about that often, but now that I am thinking about it, I think that's pretty good value, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Pretty good value. So that's six suburbs on Saturday, uh, six auctions in six suburbs. Let's kick on to Sunday, Phil, where we have an even busier day than Saturday. At 10.30am, there's a couple of auctions happening. Phil, uh, I'm doing one, you're doing one, you're doing 
22 Eskdal Road. Gary, in North. an outstanding example of a 70s solid brick building in need of some refurbishment without question, but it yep. would ease, almost impossible to overcapitalise if you are there looking to renovate the house. Having said that, it's on 700 square metres of land, Gary, with a yep. north-facing back garden. Love that. Perfect orientation, quite a broad frontage. So we've had quite a bit of interest from developers. Yep. But, you know, if you're looking for a house that you can move into and certainly spend some money in the future uh, doing some work there, it would definitely respond. And, you know, if you think about it, um, you know, houses in that street reliably are three to four million dollar locations. Yep. So you could buy that and do a massive refurbishment. Absolutely. Fill them around the corner in Normanby Road. Uh, we've sold in this block before. They are great single level villas and 4 at 69 happens to happen at 10.30am. Gary, a lovely single story villa, two bedrooms, one bathroom, one car space, carport actually, uh, and a really lovely decked area. That's a great location and you've got Caulfield North on one side and you've got Malvern on the other. And I'm hoping that by that time, Phil, 10.30 on Sunday, I will be celebrating, just recovering from the hangover from the celebration of Carlton's entry to the finals by beating Gold Coast on Saturday. Uh, let's hope that well, happens. Well, it remains to be seen whether they can do that, Gary, because yep. they've had how many wins in a row have uh, you had nine, now? I think eight or nine in okay. a row. I think it's eight in a row. The last time we had eight in a row was 1995. Guess what happened that year, Phil? Yep. I don't know what did happen. We won the grand final, Phil. Okay, there you uh, go. There's that yeah. smugness coming back again, isn't uh, it? Can't there's help nothing it. like a smug yeah. blue, yeah, blue, blue bird. Blue boy, yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> blue boy. Blue, bo blue boy bird or, or blue, blue bird. bird. Or blue, however you'd like to and identify. And shout out to the Tillies. I mean, how exciting has the whole soccer been, Gary? It's been wow. unbelievable. Do you know what was amazing? Highest rating. Be... Highest rating. Let me finish here, Gary. Don't interrupt. I hate the way you talk over the top of me all the time. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the, the Tillies... Yep. Um, We've never, it's hit ratings never seen um, since uh, Kathy Freeman ran the race at the Olympics in 2000. That's how Australia has got behind the Well, tillies. you want to know how Australia's got behind? You've got Carlton Melbourne in one of the most crucial pre finals games yes and everybody's attention is on what's going on with the Tillies extraordinary it's like even the players just wanted to stop I reckon and watch you know like, yeah. and they were distracted and of course there was a big mighty roar when they won it was announced at sort of quarter time one so, thing huge. you don't want to be distracted by Gary yeah. this Sunday of course is to be Devon no, no, I'll be there I'll so see to be there or not to be there, I'll be there. Uh, if you are there Gary you're going yep. to see four bedrooms three and a half bathrooms a double lock up garage and a swimming pool all of these things are almost unheard of yes you know two story town residents they are this is the most fabulous home and if you think about devon street how do you buy in north caulfield all of that under two and a half million dollars well if you want to know come to 2b devon street phil uh 35 to p and highway also is a great spot and daniel pier and jeremy rosen's catch up to have that auction happen yes together with arlene joffe two yep. bedrooms one bathroom uh, and a car space uh, actually, a lock-up garage, your own courtyard garden area. And this has been so beautifully refurbished. It's just a wonderful, wonderful property. I'm looking forward to rocking up and auctioning one at five, Silverly Grove, Caulfield Phillip. It's a great address, and that happens to be at 12.30 on Sunday. Gary, three bedrooms, yep. two bathrooms, a double lock-up garage, its own garden areas, uh, solid brick as well, almost unheard of. Uh, and that is just the most fabulous property in a brilliant street. Silverly, I reckon, is an outstanding address in Caulfield. I drove past this home the other day, Phil, and I thought, wow, that is a great looking property. We're now talking about 33A Fitzgibbon Crescent in Caulfield North, a fine address, Phil. Yes, three bedrooms, a study, two and a half bathrooms, a lock-up garage, another car space, uh, sorry, a double lock-up garage, and you could park a, a third car in front of that double lock-up garage. Yep. So that is... A brilliant property. I love Fitzgibbon. It's also north facing at the at the back. Yep. And I love Fitzgibbon because you're right in North Caulfield. You've got the tram in Hawthorne Road. You've yep. got access to Caulfield Park. Uh, and that is an outstanding it's home. It's a lovely tree-lined avenue, Phil. Yes. Beautiful tree-lined avenue. That's why they avenue. call it Fitzgibbon Crescent. They, it's, it must be it, Phil. Uh, Brighton Road, Rip and Lee. Uh, certainly a great looking apartment, this one. Uh, it's not an apartment, Gary. Sorry. It's a two-storey town it residence. Is. Just wanted you to know, see you were paying attention. Thank goodness yeah. I'm the anchor here. Yep. Uh, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, 
Uh, that's got everything that opens and shuts. It's a really good home. It's light and it's bright. And how good is that location? And it's spacious, isn't it, Phil? Yes, that's for sure. Uh, now, while I'm doing that auction, Phil, you won't be able to come along and check it out or me out. You'll just have to do your own auction and you get the auction honours of this terrific property in Edinburgh Avenue. What a cool property this Gary, is. Gary, it's a beautiful home. It's four bedrooms and a study, two and a half bathrooms. Yep. What I love about this property is you can move in. You could also add value, but it's also on 591 square metres of north facing land. Yep. Edinburgh is a great location because you've got Glen Ira Road, you've got, um, you've got Glen Huntley Road. You've got access to everywhere you want to be. I love this house. I would recommend everybody comes and has a look and bids furiously and makes my job easy on Sunday. Of course they should do that, Phil. It would be selfish not to. And Phil, it's never over until you've done an auction in Dover. And Dover Street is at 3.30 on Sunday. We bring the curtain down there. I look forward to seeing you then. Gary, two bedrooms, two yeah. bathrooms, uh, plenty of off-street car parking, a lock-up garage. Uh, that's a really affordable entry into the dynamic part of Caulfield South that yep. Dover Street is. Princess Park is in Dover Street. And, of course, you've got all the cafes, the gymnasium, Mook's Cafe. Yeah, with that uh, you've, great got it, you've got it all on your yeah. doorstep. Phil, there's a few properties to review before we run. One of those is in Burindi Road. Now, we know this is one of the premier, if not the Premier Street in Courtville, Southfield, and what a terrific looking property. Well, Gary, what a sensational building, solidly built, four bedrooms, three bathrooms. Uh, you've got a double lock-up garage. You've got an office rumpus room that could be a home office there. You're also on just uh, 676 square metres of land. That's a nice so block of land, isn't it? How good is land? And how, I mean, we really are blessed in Caulfield to have all of these six and 700 metre allotments. Well, uh, so that is a good house. And Burindi Road, as you said, and rightly so, Gary, that Burundi Road probably is the number one street. Well, I'll tell you what's not six or 700 square feet of land. That is a much bigger block of land in Bamba Road, Phil, because this is Club Med comes to Caulfield, Northfield. Gary, tell us about It's a 22. resort style family entertainer. Now, if you want to have everything, yep. right? First of all, the position's spectacular. Yep. Just near Balaclava Road, you've got the shopping centre in East Caulfield on your doorstep. But oh, I did it. I went to the supermarket. Oh, way. good. Yeah, I loved good. it. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it's it? Cool. It's We're river. talking about the new Coles supermarket yeah. at the East Caulfield shopping centre. Opposite the race course. Past of the race oh, course. fantastic film. But this is a yeah. resort. I mean, cancel all future holidays. Don't Why would you bother leaving yep. this house? Six bedrooms, four incredible bathrooms, a double lock-up garage. A north-south tennis court, a swimming pool, plenty of garden area, everything that opens and shuts. Uh, that is the most incredible home. And it's at the Paris end of Bamborough. Oh, I love it down there, Phil. You can speak, hear people speaking French and eating their you know, baguettes and uh, wearing berets Correct. and carrying around their little poodles Correct. Uh, on their bikes. It's fantastic. I know. Uh, Phil, we're going to finish off with this amazing apartment which only just opened for the first time on the weekend, but you had a lot of people there. I'm not surprised because how hard is it to find an apartment that actually overlooks the park? And this one does do that, Philip, in Balaclava Road. This is apartment three at 249 Balaclava Road with sweeping park vistas. Tell us a little about well, it. Well, I think you've summed it up, Gary, but there's yeah. only five apartments in this building, oh, two on building. the ground floor, two on the first floor, and one on the top. Uh, this apartment looks directly north. It looks into the trees yep. and over Caulfield Park. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, basement car parking for two cars, everything that opens and shuts, what we call a boutique style building in yep. an incredible location. There's so much to love. Get on down and, and buy that apartment. And that's a big wrap, Phil. You know, we've got a lot more listings starting to come through, but still there's some great quality now. Yep. And, and of course, some people believe, and maybe they're right, that the prices sort of start getting set now and move through spring at that or more. So some buyers say, well, you know, I'm going to jump on it now and I don't blame them for thinking well, that way because often it's the way it works. Get on with life. And one thing we've found, Gary, and, uh, and history proves this, that over time, when you buy a home, not only do you have the security and peace of mind that that is your oasis, that is yep. your castle, but over time, history has shown that property prices as generalisation double every 10 years. Yep. So, you know, what could be better than owning your piece of the Australian Absolutely. dream? And as I've always said, Gary, a mortgage is a wonderful mm. reason to get out of bed in the and morning. And that's why we continue to do so. And we'll continue to bring you all of the real estate news on GPTV. We'll see you next week. I'm Gary Pierre. I'm Philip Kingston. Have a wonderful week.